Welcome to the metagame with Oni Black Mage, talking now about tips and suggestions to optimization to marriage and children in the newest installment of the Fire Emblem franchise, Fire Emblem Awakening. Whether you're new or veteran to the game or franchise, let's cover some basics first. Skills. Now in Fire Emblem, it's stats, not levels, that really matter for a unit. And the value of a unit sometimes ties to how high its stats will cap off at. In Fire Emblem Awakening, there has been serious retooling for the class selection and class skills available for each unit, and as such, skills are now the name of the game, especially when talking about children units. Note that there are 13 parents to 13 children in the game, with Krom and a possible male avatar being the only father units. If any of these fathers marry another parent instead of a non-parent, two children will result instead of one. So let's briefly review inheritance. Note that for stats, the child will have a mix-up of what the two parents had on top of their own, and their stat caps will be the sum of the stat cap adjustments for their parents. What this means in short is, take for example two magic-focused parents. They're going to have a kid with not only tremendous magic, but that kid will have a higher cap than either one of its parents. It's possible this child can also be born with its stat already at max. Seeing as skills are more significant than stats usually, and the stats don't vary that much, don't worry too much about the stat cap adjustments between parents. Just know that strength-based and magic-based parents increase those respective caps for their children, and always cap out the skill attribute. For the record, here are the best fathers for each attribute. Moving on. Remember that, at level 10 in a base class, you can use a second seal to reclass into another base class your unit can access. At level 10 in a promoted class, you can reclass directly into another promoted class. There are unlimited second seals and master seals in the game, as well as unlimited experience grinding opportunities. Now let's finally talk about the meat of the topic, class skills. Understand that you should play per your style, but there are clearly some desirable skills that stand out above the rest. When you choose which to pass on to a child, keep in mind what the child can get for themselves and where you want them to end up class-wise. I suggest working backwards into playing the route, first by identifying where you want your character to end up and charting the optimal path there. Remember, you can only have five skills active at a time. First, let's look at the most wanted list. The most useful, of course, is Top by Gale Force, the ability to act again once you've killed another unit. Next is Ether by uh, Krom only, Rightful King also Krom only, Aptitude which is Donal only, and Astro which you can get from any Swordmaster class. Aptitude and Astro are very conditional. Aptitude can either be the most useful or the most useless, depending on how you prefer to play. With the plus 20 to base growth, what that means is that it's possible on a level up that you can in fact get plus 2 instead of plus 1 in that particular attribute for leveling up. What's useful about Aptitude is the fact that Donald, as well as Donald's child, will cap out far earlier than anybody else, as well as max out every single attribute. Astra is unique in which it actually triggers five hits, each hit which can in fact be a crit. Note that in Astra, no other abilities will be triggered like Soul or Lethality. Now let's talk about useful promoted unit level 5 skills. I suggest that these should not be passed down if the child unit can get them on their own. Soul, Luna, Lethality, Astra, and the Rally skills, which you might think might not be that useful, but we can talk about that briefly later. Finally, these are useful skills to pass down due to them either being class or gender locked, and they are almost all crowning abilities of a promoted class, making them very inconvenient to try to get them individually on their own. First, of course, is Gale Force. Next is Renewal, then Life Taker, Aptitude, Pavis, Aegis, Ignis, Counter, and any of the Weapon Fair, which are the damage plus 5 skills. Note that children inherit all class options of both parents, except gender exclusive ones, though there are a few unique options opened by certain parents. Now, let's talk about why you're likely really here Gale Force. The ability to have another turn after killing a unit is priceless in this game so you really want to have as many characters as you can with this skill. Remember, this is ignoring spot pass and DLC characters. Now getting Gale Force. First, Cordelia, Sumia, Lissa, Marybelle, and Olivia are the only parents that can naturally get this on their own anyway. Also understand that Jerome, Laurent, and Yarn cannot get Gale Force, period. Sorry boys, you're strong, but apparently not good enough for Gale Force. Cynthia, Severa, and Female Morgan can get Gale Force on their own, and actually do not need to inherit it. 
Likewise, of the 13 children, 7 of them get a free ride. Cynthia, Severa, Owain, Lucina, Anigo, Brady, and a male Morgan can just inherit it from their mother. So that's 7 children getting a free ride, 3 children who are out in the cold, which leaves the last 3. Now, in order for Shell, Noir, and Na to get Gale Force on their own, their fathers must be the male avatar, Donal, or Gaius. The reason why is because those fathers, and not the mothers, Sully, Tharge, and Noe, actually passed down the Pegasus Knight class option. Now that Gale Force is out of the way, here are some other prime candidates for passing down. Note that these are locked usually by gender, so the child can usually only get them from their mother or father. Notable ones include the male-only skills, which come from Fighter, Barbarian, Warrior, Berserker, Rally Strength, Counter, and Axe Fair, and the female-only skills, which come from Pegasus Knight, Falcon Knight, Dark Flyer, Trobador, and Valkyrie, Rally Speed, Lance Fair, Rally Movement, and Gale Force. So you can see that Gale Force is not only gender-locked, but also class-locked, so it's very desirable in its rarity. Finally, I did make a mention to Rally Skills. Here's why Rally Skills are very interesting. When you activate a unit's rally skill, you actually activate all rally skills that that unit has. Now, there are many rally skills for every single attribute, but they don't necessarily stack. Only the Grandmaster's Rally Spectrum skill, which boosts stack with all other skill boosts, actually stack. So the Avatar and its children are really the best rally units if you're going to make one. Consider this setup. The Rally Spectrum, on top of Rallying Defense, Rally Resistance, Rallying Skill, and Rallying Speed, is going to result in plus 8 in all of those categories, plus 4 to the rest of the attributes, to all allies within 3 spaces. That is not only a tremendous defensive boost, but an offensive boost as well. So keep in mind a few of the potential matchups that you can have that really would be optimal for the resulting child. For example, Krom and Olivia would be very optimal. Vike and Lissa. Frederick and Sumia. So, I hoped all this helped with all the casual and hardcore Fire Emblem fans out there. Thanks for watching the metagame with me, Oni Black Mage, wishing you happy battling.